Shut up and sit down. Hey guys, it's Annie from Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio, and today we're painting a skull taker of corn. Now, this is a long old video, this a good half hour, and uh, so we'll get straight into it. Obviously, base painted black, and then we get started off with Tindalos Red. Now, Tindalos Red is from Scale 75, and it's a really rich, deep, sort of burgundy colour. Um, and it takes a, because it's Scale 75, it's really, really thin, so it's going to take a couple of uh, layers to uh, build up that consistency, that... Um, a consistent colour that you're going to need. So once I've got a couple of layers of that on, it's then a 70% uh, Tindalus to 30% Corn Red. And I'm just starting to uh, ease those highlights in now. Uh, really broad um, sections on all the raised areas, all the muscle textures, everything you can think of what would be a uh, slightly lighter colour. Even some of the lower sections as well because we want to be blending those colours in. Uh, this is all done by hand, so uh, anybody who's uh, into uh, uh, painting by hand rather than using an airbrush can follow on completely with this. So now I've added a touch more corn, so now it's about six, uh, six parts uh, tinderless to uh, four parts corn. And again, I'm um, working those uh, same areas as before, just keeping the paint really, really thin and uh, sort of glazing it. Uh, towards the um, leading edges. Again, I'm still working on some of the lower areas as well because we've got a long way to go on this uh, on the skin tone. Uh, so it's a massive primary feature on the model, so we're uh, working really, uh, doing a lot of work on this guy to make him look more interesting. So now it is uh, for more corn red into the same mix. Now it's around about 75% uh, corn red at this, uh, this stage. Uh, it takes a bit of a, a leap. We're starting to start uh, put some actual highlights into the model, rather than really sort of um, blended alternate shades, and you can start to see the muscle structure, muscle structure just showing through uh, on the uh, lower legs and um, around his calves and hamstrings areas, and his knees as well. So now it is corn red with hot orange. So it's the uh, same same mix as before. Obviously, uh, I've got a hot orange, which is um, a Vallejo color. I believe it's from the game color range. And we're starting to uh, really accentuate, accentuate the highlights on the model, getting those um, leading edges really, really vibrant. And it's gonna take a, a little bit more uh, work on that because uh, we've got a long way to go on this dude. But as you can see, I'm just starting to um, focus towards the uh, front sections of the model and uh, pulling those highlights out nicely. So a touch more uh, uh, hot orange into the uh, mix now. So we're probably looking at around about um, a third of the colour going into the uh, hot orange, sorry a third of the uh, previous mix um, has been changed up to a bit of hot orange as well now. So um, we're really starting to focus on those uh, high points and um, using this sort of a glazing technique uh, to uh, have the paint pull forward. So it sort of pulls at the um, last spot of the, of the model. So now it is hot orange uh, into the uh, same mix, but there's now a, um, a dot of elven skin, uh, elf skin tone from uh, Vallejo. Now you could replace this with um, Cadian Flesh, that would probably do a similar sort of job. It's just to add a little bit of a pastel sort ofness to the skin tone, to stop it being quite so vibrant, quite so rich. I uh, wanted it to be a bit more uh, pastely, a bit more natural. And as you can see, I'm using a, um, a double zero here at this point. As, as I'm just focusing towards the absolute uh, points of the uh, model, I am stretching them a little bit into the uh, into the uh, deeper raised areas. As we've still got a, a couple of highlights to go yet, um, but once we've um, got some uh, nice bright highlights, uh, you can really start to uh, pop with the extra detail on this model. So now it is about. 25% uh, um, elf skin tone now, the second dot gone into it. Uh, just to 
uh, final uh, highlight at this stage, the uh, model really working those uh, leading edges, stretching it into the, the muscle texture, etc. Uh, again, it's really, really thin paint and using the sort of glazing technique what um, we've talked about uh, to um, allow the depth of the highlights to be more controlled so you can start at a deeper section and it'll just pull nicely in the, uh, in the raised areas. So now onto the cloak. This is uh, Vallejo's Game Air Black. Um, I wanted a, a proper black rather than what I was uh, using as a primer, sort of a more of a satin finish. And I'm just getting right in there with the uh, layer brush, getting a good smooth coat onto the inside of that um, cloak. Obviously I'm being extra careful to stay away from the skin tones. I don't want to ruin any of the work I've already spent um, a good few hours painting them. So now it is a 50-50 mix of um, black grey uh, by Vallejo um, model colour and black. And I'm just starting to um, pull out some of the uh, forward sections of the cloak. Uh, again, really, really wet paint so I can start from the deeper sections and it'll stretch the paint in um, and sort of the uh, paint will be drawn towards the leading edges. Uh, same method again, it's now um, more black grey than black now and it's starting to be a proper highlight. As you can see I'm just uh, adding some detail work, in, adding some of the highlights into the um, inside of a cloak. But uh, I felt that this was a little bit too vibrant so I uh, take it back again uh, once uh, I've got some more layers into it. It just gives me a bit of a... Uh, Bit more extra, a bit more control. So it's now just neat black grey, um, pulling into the uh, higher section, forward sections again of the cloak. As you can see, it's quite stark now against that black. So I'm really starting to um, feel a little bit unhappy about the colour scheme on the uh, black, but uh, I'm still going to um, plot on with it as uh, there's obviously uh, I've got time to be able to. Um, pull the model back to a sort of a more black colour. So once I've got the um, black grey down I put a layer of non oil uh, to just tone it down again. Um, it is straight out of pot this non oil, not thinned it down at all. Uh, just to, It just blends the uh, darker colours together and now I'm putting some Eshin grey onto the uh, lighter areas to uh, make them highlights a little bit more vibrant as uh, the non oil really took them down so we can start working them highlights again. Now that's a cool thing about black, although it can be a bit of a pain, um, a black wash uh, will blend the colours together nicely um, and also darken everything up a bit. So if you get, if you find your uh, highlights are a little bit too vibrant, put non oil over the top of it, uh, leave it, leave it a few minutes to dry and then you can start working the highlights again from a slightly darker shade. So now it is Skaven Black Dinge as a final highlight onto the black. Obviously, as you can see, I'm keeping it really, really dark, uh, making the cloak really stand out against the side of the uh, skin. And once again, a bit more non oil into the cloak just to make sure make those uh, uh, grey colours. Um, a bit darker and blend in together a lot nicer. So now on to the armour. Um, I'm starting off with Warlock Bronze which is a GW paint and that's going on all the um, trim of the uh, cloak. So you've got the uh, Cornate icons um, on the inside of his cloak. Also he's got a bit of a trim going around it. And also onto all the detail work on the armour as well, as well as the hilt of his sword. Um, it's a really dark colour, so it might, uh, it might not, I do apologise if it hasn't come up particularly well on the screen. Um, it's a very sort of dark, coppery colour. And also, black metal is going into the armour plate in sections. Um, as you know, any guys who've seen our videos, we use this a lot. Um, but it's easily uh, replaced with lead belcher 
Um, it's just a little bit darker than Lead Belcher normally is. Now this is going on to all the uh, sections what I haven't painted up with the uh, warp sign uh, with the waterlock bronze. Um, that's going to be uh, a nice sort of alternate feature on the armor. So onto the um, bone work now. I'm starting off uh, on his uh, tusks. Uh, and the spines on his back, they're going to be XV88 as a base colour. Now, it took me a little while to get the um, tusks, uh, how I wanted them as uh, their... Uh, this is a metal figure, and the older metal figures have a, a lot of um, fiddly detail in what you don't find in the uh, new CAD design plastic ones. Um, the detail work in the new stuff is a lot much um, easier to paint a lot nicer to work with. But I do what I can with this and I'm starting to uh, highlight it up with uh, Vallejo's khaki. Now you could use Carrack Stone, but khaki is a little bit more on the brown side, a uh, bit more uh, colour into it. And I'm just trying to pick out the edges of the uh, ridges on the tusks. Um, as a start point I'm going to be just uh, using the flat of a brush to uh, pick that all out. I'm also doing the same thing on the uh, tone, uh, on the neck claws and the uh, spines on his back. Now this is Carrack Stone plus Khaki. Now as I said, Carrack Stone is slightly lighter in colour, uh, so it actually mi mixes together really well. And what you get is a very yellowy, um, a very yellowy cream colour, uh, which uh, goes over the X88 and uh, really, really nicely. And I'm just uh, keeping the uh, highlights really, really th uh, thick, at, uh, broad at this point, because I want the um, majority of the color to be the uh, majority of the model to be that color. Now, now it's uh, Carrack Stone, uh, which is obviously um, uh, pretty thin down, and this is going to be the first start of the highlights on the spikes, uh, the spines, and the bone work. As you can see, I'm probably uh, highlighting from about the 50% uh, sort of area. And now this is a very, very, very thin down uh, Seraphim Sepia. I want to add a bit more of a yellow to the colour again. And uh, like I said, this is super thin. Uh, and I'm going to use it twice on the same areas. So it takes a little while to dry. I uh, thinned it down with um, some uh, airbrush paint thinners. Uh, but you can use whatever uh, you deem appropriate. Lamia medium worked well. Uh, you're best off staying away from water though. And use two layers of that just to uh, get that depth of colour all I'm after. So next is Bone White. And this is a similar sort of colour to um, Screaming Skull. Um, and that's going as the uh, top highlight of the uh, claws on the tusks, on the spikes. Um, but we're still a little way from uh, getting it uh, totally right, as uh, I'll be co I do come back to it a little um, from time to time, just to add a bit more depth to, of colour to the model. So now the uh, silver is being washed with non oil. I don't normally do this on um, metallic black; it's not t always necessary. But I wanted to add a little bit of uh, depth to the uh, metallic black, and with some lovely uh, subtle uh, textures in the armor plates. Uh, making it look uh, really interesting, so I thought the non oil would capture that really nicely. And I wanted to uh, really emphasize the uh, depth of the model. And now it is Vallejo um, Brassy Brass uh, going over the top of the um, What What Bronze. Now you can start to see the uh, color a little bit now. Uh, the lighting wasn't picking it up too great because obviously it's such a dark model. Uh, but I'm just um, going straight over the top of the uh, Wall of Bronze. Um, it's more of a filter, so it's going straight through um, rather than highlighting the areas. Uh, using the uh, Wall of Bronze to uh, just tone the, high the uh, highlight colours. So next is Psychorix Bronze by GW. And this um, is one of them colours. Well, it's a great highlight, but you can't really use it for much uh, as a base colour. 
and uh, I'm using that on all the uh, again all the um, what, what all the bronze sections, and it really does start to uh, pick out the lovely uh, icons of, icons of corn um, what are scattered around the model, and you really do start to get a real feel for um, the model at this point. So I'm uh, going to apply a bit of Agrax now. Obviously, I thinned this down slightly, and I'm just uh, applying it um, very liberally liberally all over the uh, bronze sections uh, to add a bit of depth of, um, to to them and also uh, it just as I've, as I said on the non uh, it blends the colors together nicely so you get a really uh, good transition to the um, highlights and provided you thin down your pet uh, your um, washers enough you pretty much do, do that as many times as you wish so now I'm going back over with her uh, Psychorax, back over the uh, same sort of areas as uh, what was highlighted before, just to uh, brighten up those highlight areas and really start to make the um, bronze work uh, start to uh, pop out of the model. Now obviously you've got to take, take your time with this, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, detail on there so it can take a little while, So, but just do, keep, try and keep your focus, have a coffee if you need to, <laughs> if you need to have a bit of a break. Now obviously uh, onto the uh, final highlight of the bronze work, I'm using Chrome. Now you could use uh, Rune Fang or even Retributor Armor. Um, so long as you use a, a thin enough paint and a sharp enough brush, you can get some really good crisp highlights on there. And just to make the um, that bronze really start to um, pop out, it becomes quite eye-catching. Now as, as you can see on the... Uh, arm plate sections I was using just as flat of my brush just to get a nice thin highlight. Now I'm using um, Vallejo's gunmetal for the uh, first layer of the of highlights on the uh, armor plate sections rather than the detail work. Just to uh, add some uh, nice lift, uh, lift those um, arm plate sections up a bit and just to uh, finally make them just a bit brighter and a bit more interesting. And back to Chrome again, just for the final highlights of the um, armor. Um, I'm being uh, careful not to try to fill in too much of a detail, although I'm gonna um, finish it up with a, a wash straight after, as uh, it's very the detail's quite fine, so it's very easy to uh, fill it in by accident. So now onto the uh, armour again, I'm using a slightly thinner brush than I did before and it's just non oil into all the um, recess areas of the armour plating uh, blends those highlights in and also obviously allows the, uh, the, shade, the shading work to uh, and the detail to uh, start to show off a bit and getting a much more interesting arm, uh, armour section uh, looking less gruffy. So back to the skin, I decided at this point I wanted the skin to be a lot brighter than it was so this is a fire red plus elf skin. It's about 50-50. And um, obviously I'm using uh, again really really thin paint. It's just a standard layer brush. <coughs> Apologies. And I'm just uh, starting where I uh, left off, but I'm pulling the highlights a bit deeper into where uh, the original, where the uh, top highlights left. So I'm probably um, covering some something from uh, maybe a, a highlight to back, but it does. I am being using thin paint so it does show through as a filter from the older highlights so it was actually worth doing. Now I've added more elf skin tone at this point so it's be uh, on the palette it's become a very peachy colour but once you um, get it onto the model it still keeps that red te um, that red hue to it so uh, you, you allow, um, you're allowing the redness of the model to still be there and vibrant but it's a much brighter colour shade to it. So it really starts to show off the detail work of him, uh, particularly on his head. And now I've added even more elf flesh. So very, very peachy at this stage. I'm just finally using the uh, last sections of the highlights, uh, last sections of the model, just to really vibrate and uh, make those highlights vibrant really make them look interesting and get them nice high points 
uh, really uh, shows off. As you can see, I'm just doing a little bit uh, across the rest of the body as well. I'm really starting to stretch those highlights out, and you get, uh, like on the inside of his thigh, a really nice hot spot, um, which just really stands out, and you get a very, very cool looking figure at this point. Now, you can always uh, blend it in with some washes again, but I uh, chose not to, as uh, I felt that the model was looking really cool at this point. So I just uh, finished off doing the highlights where I was, and just really um, left it. I was very happy. Now, the uh, tongue was a bit of a quandary to me, so I went for something really colourful. Uh, obviously, it's a Cornate model, so they tend to be quite dark and have a lot of the same sort of colours on them. But I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, so I went for Warlord Purple, which is a Vallejo colour. Now, there's obviously all kinds of uh, purples out there. Uh, this is on the pink, the pink end of things, uh, and it's a quite a thin paint, so just I did have to uh, throw a couple of layers on there just to um, make a nice smooth coat. So, the cloak, or the skulls, shall we say. All the skulls are done in the same way, even the ones on his horns. Uh, this is based with Karak stone. Obviously, I wanted a, a bone colour, but we already had a lot of bone on there with his uh, tusks and his horns. Um, so, we needed to start off with a different base so you get a different effect. You don't want your, uh, all your bone to look the same. So, a couple of good layers of Karak stone on there um, was a good place to start. So now I um, did a 50-50 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Regal and Flesh. And I'm going straight over the top of the um, Karak Stone with that and just add the depth in, add a bit of colour to the model. Um, so it's not just a flat sort of dead bony colour. I wanted something looking a little bit more interesting on there. Um, so uh, I put a bit of Reekland in there to make to, just to warm up the colour from the being the cool brown, uh, what is um, Agrax. So whilst we're waiting for that to uh, dry down, uh, the wall of purple was mixed with elf flesh and start to um, run down the sides of it as a highlight. Now it's got quite a defined split in its tongue, uh, so I, I was using that as a guide uh, to uh, the, the model. And as you can see, I'm just doing a little bit of uh, accidental wet blending as the uh, paint hadn't worked exactly how I wanted to, so I was just uh, trying to pitch it up whilst it was still drying. Whilst it was still drying. Whilst that uh, highlight's drying, I've now flipped the model upside down, and I'm using Agrax Earthshade from underneath. Uh, it takes a little while to um, get back to painting, as you need to hold the model upside down whilst, you do, uh, whilst it's drying, so the, model, so the paint sets and starts to stick to the underside of the uh, skulls. This is to add extra depth to the underside of the skulls. And um, it uh, really did help on the model itself. So now back to Carrick Stone again. And I'm just starting to uh, pick out the uh, the, pat the uh, large planes on the uh, skulls, um, making the um, bone colour start to uh, show through. As you can see, it's going to take a couple of layers of, uh, of, of the Carrick Stone just to get the... Uh, right shade where you want to, um, as it's, as always, you've got to thin your paints down, otherwise you wind up with really thick um, paint work on the model and that just looks crap. So Carrick Stone's gone down, and now it is Bone White by Vallejo. Bone White, as I said, probably um, interchangeable with Screaming Skull, as it's a bit more uh, white than Upshabti Bonus, there's a bit more yellow in Upshabti. And that's done as a, a pseudo highlight, letting the uh, majority of the um, uh, model be the bone, bone, the bone white, but I'm still allowing some of the uh, character stone to show through. After that, it is ivory, which is an old favourite of mine. Um, this works really great as a highlight for any bone colours. And as you can see, I'm just being extra gentle on all the uh, uh, brow ridges. Uh, across the top of a nose, um, ever so gentle, just to uh, pick out those detail points, and you start to see a, a very colourful model. So, um, one thing you do notice once you start getting some colour on the model uh, on his back is uh, the skulls are held together with 
uh, hooks held on his cloak. So I went uh, over them with hammered copper, obviously being particularly careful not to uh, get um, anything on the skulls, but if that does happen, you obviously just uh, have to uh, go back and fix it up. I'm using a narrow brush, so um, give me a bit more control over this as well, as uh, I didn't want to uh, cause myself too many problems. Again with the Psychorex bronze, uh, across the uh, tops of the uh, hooks, uh, it's a great little colour for this sort of thing, so it keeps the, uh, as it's, it's such a thin colour, it doesn't affect the tone so much, it just sort of brightens the uh, edge areas where you, uh, where, you, where you use it as a highlight. But once the uh, Psychorex is done, I've now really thinned down uh, Agrax Earthshade and I'm applying it to the areas around the uh, hooks on the model. Uh, even going on to some of the skull areas, uh, adding a little bit of depth here and there, but um, keeping, them, keeping the wash um, focused towards the majority of the um, hooks, uh, but use, using, uh, using the opportunity to uh, add a little bit more depth to, uh, to the uh, skull regions. So now onto the eyes. I, uh, I do apologise if you can't see the eyes particularly well. Uh, I did try my best to get a good image on there. And that is using Scorpion Green by Vallejo. Now this is fluorescent. You could use a Warp, uh, warp, warp Glow, uh, Warpstone Glow on there instead. It's a very, very colourful, bright green. I thought this would make a really cool um, uh, colour for his eyes. Um, and like I say, it's just really difficult to get the uh, colour in there. On the uh, hilt of the sword uh, is Acadian Flesh. Now I decided I wanted to do something um, a bit more fleshy on there as if it's been leather bound by some kind of animal hide or uh, maybe a, a skin of a, a human or an Eldar. That sort of idea. I'm now using a Psychorax Bronze again on the uh, tops of the hooks again, I do apologise, I completely lost my words there. And uh, just like I did on the other armour sections, using the Psychorex just to uh, really start to finalise those highlights. And again with the chrome, uh, just on the uh, absolute extreme points on the hooks just to uh, add a little bit of shine onto the model and uh, you get and um, you start to get somewhere uh, once your uh, once these highlights are down back onto the uh, skulls again and um, we've started for a couple of final highlights now which is off white uh, going into all the Po uh, more pointed sections like across the brow and across the noses just all the uh, areas where uh, the most vibrant uh, highlight should be um, you don't have to be on every single skull if you don't want it to be as well just to uh, throw a bit of extra colour to the model and just to uh, it, it really just um, down to your own uh, sort of uh, choices at that, at that stage now I'm just uh, Throwing a little bit of um, black onto the teeth. I wasn't, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't totally sure what I wanted the teeth to do, so I just left them black, uh, make them look a bit more evil uh, than he already did. And a touch of elf flesh now onto the uh, bindings, uh, wraps of the uh, blade. Now this has had a um, Reekman flesh, um, Reekman flesh shade wash over it. And now I'm just using the Elven Flesh as a highlight uh, across the uh, across the model. I'm trying to use a flat of the um, a flat of a brush wherever possible, just to touch the uh, wraps on the model itself. There you are. And we've got something uh, looking like a interesting um, hand guard handle hilt. Dodge edit that bit to make it make sense. So there we are. 
I uh, apologise for not doing the sword on camera. I was trying to wet blend it up, um, but it, it just wasn't having it. I just could not get it to look right for the love of money. So I had to do that with the airbrush. So uh, I didn't want to spoil the tutorial by by, by cheating at that, uh, cheating on it. Uh, so uh, I will say uh, that the paints used are black green for the base colour, sick green for the sort of the mid tone, and scorpion green, and then finished up with a bit of green grey for the edge highlight. So obviously we've got some uh, thank yous to make. So thank you um, to what for watching this, guys. Uh, we do hope you uh, enjoy these videos and uh, keep on watching our stuff. If you want to catch up um, on any of our other uh, videos, uh, hit subscribe, hit like, and share with your friends. Now, thank you to D Wack, Warren, Love Minis, The Orc Boys, Joe Spearpoint, Ludwig Offbauer, Kit Linquist, and Aquamus of Dawn. Extra special thank you to you guys, you're our top Patreons. If you want to join us on Patreon, please check out the link below. Um, we any, any support you can give us is absolutely essential. It really does help us out. Also, check out the outposts as well. There are affiliate link um, for reduced price models, usually between 15 and 20 percent off. Everything you can uh, imagine from a hobby is all available there. So, thank you for watching this, guys, and we shall catch you in the next one. Ta-ra! <laughs>